Hi there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video I've got a big smile on my face because I'm taking a look, or we're taking a look, at another filter from Fluval and they are generally very good. And this one is the FX2. It's the wee little babby of the family. You've got the FX5 and 6 which are pretty much the same filter, FX4 and FX2. And really it needs very little introduction because the FX range of filters are used extensively, especially for people with predator tanks, cichlid tanks, goldfish tanks, tanks where you need quite a lot of mechanical filtration and also a good amount of biological filtration. Now before I get it out of the box, I'll just read a little bit of information from Fluval themselves from the box. Uh, they say it is suitable for a tank of up to 175 US gallons or 750 litres and the pump is capable of shifting 475 US gallons per hour or 1800 litres per hour. Now that sounds like a, a big flow rate but as we know once you fill the thing up with media you put it underneath your tank and the, the pump has to draw the water out and then pump it back to the tank you can take a good amount off there often 40 50 percent depending on the situation but nevertheless that is still a good flow rate let's get it out the box there you go this was sent to me by a guy called philip who lives reasonably locally and it's still got the protective wrapping on because it is brand new so this is exactly how it comes set up from the manufacturer nobody's been inside it tampering with anything unfortunately i don't have an fx4 to size it against but you can see it is much smaller than the FX5 or 6 and FX4 would be exactly the same diameter as this just a little bit shorter so it'd be roughly the same height as that but the FX4 would be that diameter and the FX2 is that diameter so it's definitely more compact than the older filters in the FX range got the same sort of process to get into the FX2 obviously these are slightly different to the previous FX filters in the range but similar sort of thing in and out so you can't make a balls of setting this up and just like the others in the range there's no pump in here because the pump is on the bottom Okay, now obviously that is the, the bigger one, the FX5 or FX6. On the left, uh, I've already upgraded this one, as you can see. That is the new FX2. There's quite a difference in the diameter. And also there's a difference in this distance here. So this foam is less thick than the foams that I've put in here. We've got almost two inches of space there to put foams in. Whereas here it is probably near an inch and a half maybe. So I'm not expecting to get both coarse and medium foams into the new filter. So the water comes in the top of the filter. Down this pipe. Then goes down here right to the bottom of the filter. Before swirling around the outside of the trays. Going through the mechanical filtration which in this case is foams or foam and then it comes up this little space here between the foam and the inner part of the tray down through the central parts of the tray before being drawn back in by the pump and pumped back to the tank that system has worked very well for Fluval and very well for the FX filters for many years I've got no complaints about how that works it's it's a good system now the central part of the new filter is the same diameter, which is roughly six and a half inches or 16 centimeters or thereabouts as what it was or what it is in the FX5 and FX6 and also FX4. So it should hold a similar amount of media per tray. And bear in mind, there's only two trays in this one. FX5 and FX6 have three trays. FX4 has two trays. Do you know, before I start pulling this apart, I actually forgot to mention the build quality. Well, you know, it's a Fluval FX filter. The build quality is great. So nothing really needs to be said about that. Just like the FX4, 5 and 6, 
trays come out like that and hopefully in there you can see the point where the water comes in so that little c-shaped bit here that's where the water comes in and it swills around here we've got a bit of a recess to catch heavy muck okay so that is our two trays and this is exactly how it comes set up from Fluval. Now bear in mind that the water swills around the outside of these trays, goes through the foam and then down out the bottom into the pump and then gets pumped back. Now for the FX2 Fluval have gone with a good quality foam again but they've got little bumps on it to increase the surface area. That is a good upgrade over the previous FX filters. And because we've got two trays, we've got four pieces of foam like that as our first part of the mechanical filtration. That's good. And bear in mind that's coarse foam around the outside. And unfortunately, the next thing it hits is another coarse foam. So whatever managed to get through here is certainly going to get through here. into our filter media. Now in the top tray we've got some of Fluval's standard rings as the biological media. Unfortunately that bag only weighs 180 grams. There is a one in the bottom tray as well so that makes 360 grams which for you guys in the US is around about 12.7 ounces of filter media uh, which is expected to be the biological media. That equates to roughly 0 0.79 pounds. So into the bottom tray, we've got a couple of bags for the filter media. Another bag of that ceramic rings in this tray, which I will not be putting back in the filter. And then we've got a carbon pad as the last thing the water hits before it leaves the filter. That is in the right place because you always want your chemical filtration last. You would always go mechanical, biological, chemical. I'll just get all this lot stripped out. That way you can see exactly the stuff that will be filtering your tank water. Okay, so as far as the mechanical filtration goes, we've got four coarse foams, another coarse foam, and that's it. As far as the biological filtration goes, we've got 360 grams or 12.7 ounces or 0 0.79 pounds of standard fluval rings. Then for the chemical filtration, which bear in mind you don't always need, we've got a little carbon impregnated pad. Now we can definitely do better than that, especially on the biological side. That, in a filter which is supposedly going to filter up to 750 litres or 175 US gallons, it just simply isn't enough biological filtration. Luckily, with the amount of foams, you will harbour a decent amount of bacteria in there and you should never get a problem with ammonia and nitrite but this series is all about setting filters up to try and create a full cycle which is the processing of ammonia and nitrite but also the nitrate because that is perfectly possible in any filter with the right media and enough of that media for the stocking situation as I'll explain later. Now in the previous videos that I've done on the FX series of filters I haven't really thrown up any negatives about how they come set up. I really should have done because that just isn't enough. And given the fact that Fluval do at least two types of biological filter media, one of which is actually called BioFX, I think they could put a hell of a lot more filter media into these trays when they're selling the filters especially given the price of these filters, because they aren't cheap. They are towards, well, they're definitely a premium filter. And really, if they're selling a premium filter, they should put the best filter media in and plenty of it. Otherwise, it's, 
it's just not going to be as efficient as it could be. I mean, that's it's pretty obvious. And then people are going to go and have to top up. They're going to tip this and then go, God, there's an out in there. And of course, nine times out of ten, they'll go back to Fluval for more of these rings. And that's an add-on sale that you, you guys should not be having to make, you know. So that won't endear me to Fluval, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, and that's what the series is about, upgrading filters so that they actually work properly, how they should. Oh, and this part of the video is really just for the people who say, I've pulled my filter to bits and I can see bits of bio home in the bottom, a few bits of reddish coloured sand. Can you see that in the bottom of there? That is from the Fluval Media. You know, you can see it. It's gritty. And that's when it's bagged. Imagine how much grit you're going to get off when it comes out of the bag and you're cleaning it and putting it back in. You know, all good porous media will shed something and the pump will have no problems just spitting that back out. Previous FX videos that I did, if you've seen those, you'll remember that I put a coarse and a medium pad together, just as was demonstrated earlier for that FX5 that we took a look at. And that would go around the outside, whoops, like so. So the water would go through coarse and medium before dropping down through our trays. Because of the limited distance here, we can't do that. So, a few different choices. Stick with the fluval foams or some sort of generic replacements from the likes of Finest Filters in the UK. They do good quality foams. Perfectly fine, you know. These foams will last for ages. Take them out, clean them. When it comes time to replace them, just replace them with something generic that's made for this filter. We could go with one of those bumpy foams, but as you see, it's not very thick. That's all we can fit in there. So whilst it will give us more surface area on the outside, it's not as thick as the fluval foam. Or we go with one of the medium foams. Now in light stocking scenarios, like a planted tank, where you just had community fish, that one would probably work pretty well. Really that's a better one to demonstrate the increase in the surface area on the outside. And that the water goes down to the bottom of the filter first, swills around, goes through the sides of your trays and then down through the rest of the filter. Some people might want to put coarse foam on the bottom, medium foam on here. The coarse particles, the big bits of muck and fish waste and so on, will probably hit this one first before they go through and then they go that one because obviously the, the heavier the particle is, the closer towards the bottom of the filter it's going to stay. So you've got that option as well. What I would suggest is if you stick with the standard fluval foams, which are definitely coarse, on the top of your top tray, I would advise putting a medium density pad. It'll catch the vast majority of fine muck as well. You could put a fine pad underneath that to polish the water before it gets to your filter media in the middle of the trays. Quite a lot of usable space in the top tray. So it leaves a lot less room for filter media. This is the strainer which draws the water out of the tank into the filter. So if you want to, you could take that apart, put in a piece of coarse foam, coarse foam in there. So the water has to go through the coarse foam before it gets drawn out into the filter. Then on the outside of your trays, you could go with the medium density pads followed by fine pad in the top of the top tray and bear in mind it doesn't have to be that thick you could probably rip that in half where well, this is it will clog quite quickly especially in a tank that has quite high filtration demands cichlid tanks goldfish tanks that sort of thing you know so you will have to take this apart and clean it quite regularly of course you could go with a big block of foam all the way around here and that wouldn't need cleaning quite as regularly, but it wouldn't look very nice in the tank. A few times 
when I've been making these filter videos that I really have no idea what the best foam setup is for the outside of the filter, you know. It really just depends on the situation you've got in your tank. How many fish are in there, how much waste they produce, how often you are prepared to get into the filter and clean it out, etc, etc. A kit for people to buy which will have coarse, medium and fine foams and the necessary filter media to fill up the insides of the trays. As far as the foams go, you just put them in wherever you want to put them in, you know? The pads that I supply in the filter kits are 11 inches by 17 inches. That works out perfectly for the FX2 because the length of foam needed is exactly 11 inches to fit into here. So you just have to cut them into strips nine centimeters wide, which I think is what three and a half inches or thereabouts. So nine, nine centimeter strips, very easy to do. You just cut it with a pair of scissors. If you wanted to change from the fluval foams, it's entirely up to you. Red trays that find themselves in the new versions of the FX filters are really surplus to requirements. We don't need those. Real shame. Because they're really well made, that's great quality plastic, you know? But we just don't need it. I would much rather see Fluval, instead of putting these in the filters, put more filter media in the filters. That's way more important than having these trays. Is what we have to fill with filter media. The bottom tray will be filled up completely with filter media. Top tray will be filled up most of the way, but it will leave space for our fine pad. And as I meant before, you could rip this in half to make it half as thick and therefore you'd get a little bit more filter media in than I will today. Yep, that's about it. So in the bottom tray we can easily get a kilo and a half with a careful packing. We could probably get a bit more. That's a kilo and a half of Biohome Ultimate. And for you guys in the US, that's the weight along the bottom there. In the top tray, because we need to leave space for either a fine pad or a medium pad, we can only get about a kilo in. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. And even with that thick pad, that's a pretty much a perfect fit in there. So the water goes through the outside, down through the fine pad, then through two and a half kilos of Biohome Ultimate. Again, for you guys in the US, that's what it is in your language. Obviously, if we went with the medium pad in the top, you should be able to see that we would get more media in here. So we could probably get up to, well, I don't think we'll get three kilos in, but you know, we could certainly get more than two and a half kilos in there. I haven't tested to see exactly how much because there's so many different ways of setting up the foams and fine pad in this filter. <laughs> so now we've got mechanical filtration, mechanical filtration, biological filtration, and if we wanted chemical filtration, that would go on the bottom of the bottom tray underneath that media. One of the ways you can vastly improve the efficiency of this particular filter. You just do whatever suits you. The kit that I'm going to produce for this will have coarse, medium and fine foams in. So you can just set it up however you want. It'll also have the two and a half kilos of filter media in as well. The filter media is the most important thing. The biological side of things needs to be improved on this filter. I cannot ever imagine anybody running this filter just with that amount of biological media. That simply isn't enough. And fluval biological filter media from 0.7 pounds or 360 grams to two and a half kilos or 5.5 pounds, which is a massive increase. 
and also that translates straight to a massive amount of surface area that's been created in there for the bacteria and because it's the home ultimate in there you've got the outer parts of the media supporting aerobic activity to make sure that the ammonia and nitrite is always zero but you've also got the core of each piece of media acting a little bit like a miniaturized deep sand bed no matter how much flow you have going through the trays of filter media inside the media there's always going to be slow flow zones due to how it's constructed it's basically uh, just like a miniaturized deep sand bed the water will always find the easiest route which is around the filter media it won't be forced through the filter media some of the tunnels go nowhere some of them end in big cavities some of them will have slow flow zones some will have no flow zones so that's where the anaerobic activity happens which will reduce the nitrate only person dealing with filter media who's actually taken the time to work out exactly how much filter media is needed to get that full cycle and that reduction in nitrate and that took me about 10 years of communicating with thousands of people who've used the biohome in all sorts of situations all over the world with all sorts of different water conditions time because that allows me to confidently tell you now what size of tank and what stock this filter once upgraded would be suitable for and bear in mind we're talking about a full cycle we're not just talking about zero ammonia zero nitrite which is easy to do with minimal filtration we're talking about the full job and Fluval said that this was suitable for a tank of 175 US gallons or 750 litres it's in reality three times exaggerated because we've got two and a half kilos of media in here for a normally stocked tank it would be suitable for 250 litres or up to 250 litres and that's 66 US gallons if it's a heavily stocked tank you can halve those figures to 125 litres for heavy stock or 33 US gallons and that doesn't sound like much but bear in mind we are talking about a full job if you're not bothered about the nitrate levels and you want to do huge 70-80% water changes every week if you've got cichlids or something just stick with what comes with it ammonia nitrite is easy to control but if you want a full job I would suggest upgrading it you know even if you didn't want to use the biohome Substrat Pro is probably what I would recommend. It uses a slightly finer particle to make the little balls, but it will support aerobic and anaerobic activity. It's just a shame that it's not made in a different format with different particle size. But that's a good second choice. I'll put a link to that in the video description. Thanks to Philip for sending me this. I'm going to get it boxed up and sent back to him now, so he should receive it back tomorrow. Um, I just want to hammer home the point that I've mentioned so many times in these videos that if you want to achieve a full cycle do not use a water conditioner which messes with the ammonia nitrite and nitrate even if the manufacturer says oh it only locks it up for 24 48 hours it messes with the food that the bacteria needs so it creates an artificial famine for the for the bacteria so instead of your filter once it's upgraded being you know 100 percent every little surface full of bacteria all consuming the ammonia nitrite and nitrate that food just simply isn't there for them so the population might be down to I don't know 25 30 percent and you can see that demonstrated in quite a few of the videos that you see online if you but if <laughs> uh, no, I'm not gonna name names but if you're watching any videos online especially people with cichlid tanks and they're doing you know 70 80 percent water changes they're basically telling you that their filter isn't doing a job and they're always using that conditioner which pretty much murders the bacteria by starving it of the ammonia nitrite and nitrate just use an ordinary dechlorinator it simply makes the water safe for life the bacteria can populate everywhere in the tank and you only need to do minimal water changes just as long as it takes to go in with a gravel cleaner clean up drop you know this much this much this much water out your tank that's as much as you need to do nobody should be doing 70 80 percent water changes and then telling you that the water is perfect because it isn't and the filter is dead
watching. I hope it wasn't too boring for you because my voice is not the most interesting voice. But if you can suffer any more of me, then this video is in a playlist called Pimp My Filter. And I think there's over 90 videos in that playlist now. So if you've got those videos simply to show specific filters, how the water flows through them and how they can be upgraded. Even if you don't want to follow my instructions on using the biohome or even changing the foams, if you know how the water flows through your filter, you can make improvements to it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.